diesel mechanics, and aerial linemen. Join the brotherhood built on hard work, authentic people, and pedigree of success. Bauer, a family-friendly company who reminds you, go be ready. Forget the lame excuse this year. Your boss already knows why you can't make it to work for those magical two days in mid-March. Join 93.7 The Ticket on Thursday and Friday, March 21st and 22nd at Buffalo Wings and Rings at 68th and O for March Mayhem. Come early on Thursday and get a ping pong ball with a lucky team on it and stay all day for prizes throughout and buzzer beater upsets. It's March Mayhem with 93.7 The Ticket for the NCAA Tournament at Buffalo Wings and Rings, 68th and O. Southeast Community College invites you to check out our spaces ahead of your official campus visit. Our virtual campus tours let you see our campuses and learn more about our programs of study. Then you can schedule your individual visit in person or virtually. Virtual tours of our campuses in Beatrice, Lincoln, or Milford and our learning centers are online at southeast.edu slash visit SCC. SCC, your path to possible. Start your Sundays off right with Jeff and Nicole Essink on Fitness Fanatics. Jeff and Nicole discuss health and wellness, how to achieve fitness goals, and more through the life of gym owners and gym goers. It's Fitness Fanatics from 9 to 11 a.m. on Sundays on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Hi, folks. Sean Callahan here for Couple Chevrolet GMC, and the Chevrolet and GMC Truck Month is now underway. We've got huge savings in Louisville. Get 9000 off or 1.9% for 72 months on select models. Yes, you heard right. That's 9000 off or 1.9% for 72 months happening right now at Couple. So take that short money saving drive down 144th Street or check us out online at couplecars.com. You'll be glad you did. All deals with roof credit stock number G214773. Sand Hills Global is hiring. With their fast-paced, growing culture, they have hundreds of new openings in sales, marketing, traveling support, software development, web design, and more. Full-time roles offer a four-and-a-half-day work week, along with flexible internships in most areas. Career and internship opportunities are available at our global headquarters in Lincoln, Nebraska. Find your fit today at www.sandhills.jobs. Empower a child today with the Teammates Mentoring Program. Hope is only a conversation away when you choose to share your talent, time, and heart with a child. Together, you can build a relationship based on strengths and chart a brighter future one week at a time. Find out how you can be a mentor by visiting LincolnTeammates.org. Become what you needed as a kid by joining the Teammates Mentoring Program today. Your child was embarrassed when you arrived at their basketball game. 75% of parents or guardians report current alcohol use. Drinking alcohol can cause harm to children and loved ones. By drinking less, your child will be excited to see you at their basketball game. If you or a loved one is looking for help, find a treatment facility near you at findtreatment.gov. For immediate support, call, text, or chat 988. Brought to you by Nebraska DHHS in partnership with SAMHSA. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet. KNTK FM Firth. 93.7 The Ticket. You're listening to coverage of the NCAA Tournament live from Buffalo Wings and Rings at 68th and O on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. This is the happy hour. Met you live from the heart of Lincoln, America. Yeah, I'll maybe I'll come for a couple. Here are your hosts, Nick Sainert. I am a huge guy. And Enrique Alvarez Cleary. C is for chunk. Brought to you by Empire Fence and Netting on 937 the ticket and the ticketfm.com. Brad 184. There it is. All right, we'll do it again. One o'clock hour. Appreciate it, guys. Enjoy the basketball. Here we are. Am I on? Here we go. This is the happy hour. Rico's getting its headset on. I'm Austin Norman. Thanks for tuning into the happy hour. Brought to you by Empire Fence and Netting. Really appreciate them for their support. Again, big shout out to Buffalo Wings and Rings for having us out here. We are out here not only today, we will be out here tomorrow as well. We're, well, I say we very loosely. I say you ain't going to be here. I, I will not be here. What are you talking about? You ain't going to be boy. here. Going to Corvallis. Yeah, boy. He gone, baby. Out of here. 
So I am going to eat my fair share of wings. You do that. And rings and probably mozzarella sticks. Ooh. Maybe some French fries. Hey, the fries here are slamming. Beautiful. Is They're what they incredible. Are. Stricky is uh, taking my fries away from me. Wow. For Strick. some reason. Strick, what are you doing? Those again, are Austin's again, dirty fries. Said, for my partner. He said, I'll bring them dirty back. Look. What are you going to do? They're Austin's I'm kidding. fries. No, they're not my fries. The thievery. I'm kidding. You know, Stricky, though, he's uh, all about them steals on defense. So hey, that's all he does, I baby. respect it. Um, so far, we have a rock fight between Duquesne and BYU. Dang it. Duquesne was up like 19 to 3. An okay game between Michigan State and Mississippi State. The MSU versus MSU battle. First of all, who has the better color scheme in the MSU MSU battle? Uh, Mississippi State. Really? Yeah, and it's not really? like it's not like the maroon is a better color. I just like what they do with their uniforms and their colors more than what Michigan State does. And also, Michigan State does that disgusting like bright lime green thing every once yeah. in a while, and I can't get behind that. Their basketball bright green is much better than their football. The, the green. football one is disgusting because then it just says state. In like State. huge block letters across the front, and it's like, what are you doing? What are we doing? BYU we doing? goes in front for the first time today against UK. And here's the thing: I'm not going to say this because I'm trying to have some revisionist history. Yes, you are. If you listen back to on the block around Nebraska Duquesne uh -huh. back early in the fall, I, mean, I know we had some episodes of the Corner Three where this came up. I said multiple times Duquesne was going to be a quality win for Nebraska. It didn't look as good throughout the year. But credit to Duquesne, Coach Keith Dambrod, who's retiring at the end of this tournament run, whether it's uh, today or would it be Saturday yeah. or whenever Duquesne's run comes to an end. Duquesne is a solid team. We saw that when they came to Lincoln. They led Nebraska, I believe, at halftime and into the second half. I don't want to say Nebraska was lucky to win that game, but Nebraska had to go downhill get to the free throw line. Okay, Rico's stepping out, and you are oh, I'm not going stepping to be out. so excited to I see just, this. I need You're this. You're stepping back so you can get the big <sighs> chair in here. How many people does this fit? If it's one Rico? If it's one Rico. Here we go. Ugh. If you're on, you need to be on stream seeing this right now. Buffalo Wings and Rings hooked Rico up with the largest chair there I've seen go. in my life. There we are. Go now we're. The now crisscross applesauce. Stretch those hips out. Uh, here we go. Hey, hold on. Here we go. Get yeah. the legs up. Uh, come, come on, old stretch. man. Uh, oh, come on. on. Hey, hey, check out, hey, check hey. out the Nike. Check there we go. The They're fresh. Here we They're go. Clean. Oh, did a little hip stretch. Here hey. we go. Oh, here we Look go. Look at Rico on uh, his throne. All right, everyone. If you're in Buffalo Wings and Rings, come bow down to King Rico on his throne. You have the Iron Throne, but this is Rico's hard ice hey, tea, twisted I got the, tea yeah, throne. Yeah, I got the twisted tea throne, and I, I run this place now. What's up, Jay? How you doing? It's this probably now. a king in his throne. That's what it is, baby. It's probably more comfortable than the Iron Throne. <laughs> that thing looks so uncomfortable to sit on. This? No, it's, the Iron Throne. Oh, the Iron this Throne? Looks oh, yeah, wonderful. I'd much rather up, sit Jay? on this than the Iron Throne. That's all oh. I'm saying. All right, we'll get the feet. We'll just, okay. Hey, I feel, hey, you know, Kevin Hart was. Like, like a baby seat for you. It really is. <laughs> hey, it's, this is my high chair, Jay. Hey, you, know, it, it Kevin, high. you know, Kevin Hart was talking about in his special how when he sits in like stools, his, his legs just swing. swing yeah, that's me. I'm just going to swing my legs. How tall is Kevin Harlan, by the way? Kevin Hart. Oh, Kevin Hart. Yeah, no, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart's my height. Kevin Harlan, how tall is he? I'm trying six three. Mm, yeah, Kevin Harlan. Kevin Harlan's legs, feet his, touch the his legs ain't swinging. <laughs> they are not. What's up, Nick? How you doing, man? Uh, once again, this is the happy hour brought to you by Empire <laughs> Fence and Edding. Big thanks to Buffalo Wings Ring for everything going on. Um, I don't want to like hit you in the back of the head with the arm of this thing, but then Nick's trying to get in over it. here. Okay. I don't know what's going on. We got fine. six drink holders yeah, here. I, yeah, I have so so. This so is one amazing. for wings, one for fries, one for sauce. Like this is fantastic right now because I one have for beer, six. Like one I have water. three on this. If you're watching, get to the Starter Heyman Jewelers live video stream. Facebook, YouTube, Facebook. Twitch, Twitter. Exactly. Facebook. Oh, look at that. Look at this. Hey, look at this. Ooh. We got these things. Oh, we lost our. We lost our. Dang connection. it. Let me get this back over here. Ugh, I gotta come it's, on. It's stream, kind of a, hey, it's kind of a struggle getting in and out of this chair. I'm not gonna lie to you. Oh yeah. I'm a short guy, so. <laughs> It's a it's a second to, to figure it out, but we I have this is huge summer vibes. Like I know this is March Madness, and I don't want to skip through it, but this chair gives me big day at the beach. This is this is a, this vibes. is a lake chair. This yeah. is a, oh a Fourth of July chair. Yes, one hundred percent. I could sit in here with both of my kids. I could sit in this chair with my wife and both of my kids, and we would be pretty comfortable. Like this this chair is yeah. massive, and I have enough drink holders for everybody to have their own drink. I got three on the left side, three on the right side. I got some twisted teas in here. Courtesy don't put that of in Buffalo your kids' Wings sippy cups. Don't put twisted tea. It's not it's not iced tea, so don't put that in your kids' sippy cups. Farley's jealous. Farley wishes he could sit in this chair, but he can't. Yeah, you only... have five more sacks in your career, and you exactly. get in the chair. And the only way that you can get a chance to sit in this chair and possibly own this chair 
is if you get down here to Buffalo Wings and Rings. The only way. There is no other way. Hi, Nick. So I, sh I should tell people. Yeah, let the people know. You're on the far one. Uh, far left. Far My left. left. Yeah. So right. I, I should tell people the national champion of our ping pong ball mm -hmm. gets that chair. Whoa. There you go. That is part of the prize. Dang. If you pick the national champion winning ping pong ball. So actually, you get that. If you want this chair and you're watching on the stream right now, you can't. You can't. It's somebody that's already here. <laughs> it's somebody that's already here. It could be the very first person that walked in the door who got UConn. That's How right. does that work? How does the first person the get the odds ping of it are, are wild. UConn. Look, I respect Jake, and I know he would never do it, but I feel like he rigged it. Jake I don't know. Rig something? I don't Say know. Say it ain't so. He would never. But, I mean, he might have. Hey, we do have a winner up here. Congratulations on winning your prize. Look sorry. at that. Look Rocket at that. the Husker Polo. Here's my question for you, Rico. Nebraska, I think, pretty clearly overachieved this year. Maybe not by a lot, but overachieved. Yes. The flip I feel side bad that, for sitting back here and having you look back fine. at me. It's fine. <laughs> and we're not on stream. People don't care anyways. <laughs> Texas A&M, on the other hand, underachieved. Yes. Preseason pick to win the SEC. Preseason pick to win the SEC. I was not on board with that. I was not rolling. Mm -hmm. But you could still see the talent in Buzz Williams' squad. Wade Taylor, the fourth preseason uh, player of the year. He's really good. Do you trust an overachieving Nebraska team or an underachieving Texas A&M team more? I was talking about this earlier off the air, and I trust that Texas A&M team more. Not to say that I don't want Nebraska to win. Obviously, I want Nebraska to win. But that Texas A&M team, like you said, was a preseason pick to win the SEC. A lot they, of things, right? Sometimes you just come out on just the wrong side of the side of the And, you know, they had a decent roof. They, they started the season really well. So they're in the top 15, I believe. Um, and then you know, they hit the skids for a little bit. They had a five game losing streak or something wrong with them. They took them out of the top 25. And then they, you know, win, loss, win, loss, win, loss, win, loss, win, Things like that. But, to me, this Texas A&M team has a lot has a more, more in the tank that they can they can get out of than maybe this Nebraska team has. We understand and we've seen what Nebraska can do when they're hitting on all cylinders. This Texas A&M team has that possibility as well. Maybe not shooting as well because they're not the greatest shooting team that can score last. But the fact that they understand that they missed a lot of shots, right? They understand that so well that they grab so many offensive rebounds. And I believe they lead the country in offensive rebounds. And to me, rebounding and defense are going to travel. So yes, Nebraska is pretty solid defense. But their rebounding rate, although they are much improved than they have been in years past, and they are a pretty decent rebounding team, they're still not to the level of this Texas a and Yes, they might miss a lot of shots, but they're going to crash the board with some crazy efficiency. And we've seen when Nebraska can blow down the water, that's what happens. That's what happens is they get 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 there were two games, were two where, they games where they lost the offensive rebound rebounding margin, margin by a, 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 ton. a ton. And that was, and that the, was Maryland the Maryland and the Rutgers blowout loss. Blow it was one it was game one where game they lost the game when they were even, and, and that was the Creighton game. game. So, so, so everything else got like, 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 that. Was that was just a bad one. But this Texas A&M team with their rebounding strategy, with their rebounding prowess, scares a lot as a matchup for Nebraska. I describe Texas A&M as a hammer. Every, Every problem, problem that doesn't look like a nail. They're, they're just down, 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 and down, and down, and down, and down, 40 minutes out of it. On the flip side, I think Nebraska's more a certain right? Well, I don't say delicate, but measured. Look at quality. Look, quality opportunities. I think what I meant to try to get as many shots up as they think is one of them out to go in the way. And that's why I still have such a hard time as a world. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, you know, your Iowa's, your Twitter, Michigan, maybe. Versus like a Washington who wants to just run that. Who can't run the ball and rebound in this case? case. But whose ideal way of playing is spread, is, is quality of what more so than quantity. Here's the next question that I'm asking a and How much benefit of the doubt do you give Texas a and Because they've been in this tournament recently. Yeah, they lost last year. Mm -hmm. How, How much does that NCAA tournament experience having been through the whole board 
how much does that help us in this one touch? A ton, a ton. It helps us so much because then you can say, you know, this is Brad Brassett, this is how I'm trying to, you know, throughout the big, throughout the season, and then you can go through everything, like, they have big fans, like, some strong conference. But the NCAA tournament, although it's a neutral side, it's still a good for both teams, right? And it's just a different vibe than just a regular season game. You know, at Iowa, regular season at Michigan State, like the odds are just different. And if you can get swept away by the pageantry, although it is just a first round, the pageantry of the NCAA tournament, having two guys, I believe, on this Nebraska roster that have gone through NCAA tournaments and had that kind of experience with Sean Gary, and I think it was Aaron Ulis, but Aaron Ulis is not playing, so he can you know, tell the guys as much as he wants to, but they're going to experience it for themselves, and that's going to be Hopefully, the Fred Warburg's experience, the Rachel Singh's experience, they'll be able to keep this team under control where they don't rush them. Because you were saying that they're, you know, you know they're looking for great shots, not just good shots, they're not forcing, you know, there's a couple, but they're not forcing things up, shot, 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 the style, the style, the style, the style, the big, or just the guys that can grab off and throw it off and throw it off and not have to worry about, you know, missing four shots in a row and they're going to get away from it. So the rest of them were great shots. I just have good shots and a great shot. And if they're, if they get swept away, in the match that, that is the end of the tournament, they get away by the fact that they're playing in the FedEx Forum. Like, oh my god, John Ryan shoots on that. this basket. Like, like, like Jerry Jackson Jr. Jackson is doing this. Like, 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 yeah, stop it. it. Um, we're, we're in an NBA arena. Like, if they get swept so away by the man, and then the other fan base is going to be cheering for them or against them, it could be a long, long night for Nebraska because it's going to be a physical matchup. And you, you if, if you get swept, swept away by it, you, you might lose your mind and, and, and your body at the same time. Does Fred Hoiberg's previous experience come to play at all? I mean, I'm I'm sure. Sure. he made it made four straight years at Iowa State, uh, 2012, 13, 14, and 15. Mm-hmm. It's his first birth at the Browns, right. you know that. Right. Does Fred Hoiberg's experience in the NBA play playing playing in arenas like, like that, that and, and in the NBA with the Iowa State think help, help Brad at all? Is is not that. I think it's a, a pretty big factor because it's a little bit of both. Because he, again, he's not going to be out on the court, you know, Seeing the flashing lights and all of the all the things uh, you know, around you and doing these things, and although he's traveling, it's just a different, different feeling for the guys who have been there, been there. That's that's done. Done. So, so I can sit here and I can tell you like, like hey, this is what's going to happen. This is what you're going to go through. You know, this is this this will be here, but don't worry about this. You know, there's going to be more people side. There's going to be a lot more people. Blah blah blah. All this stuff. And you can say, yeah, yeah, I got it. But then as soon as you step on that court and the holes are flashing and everybody's yelling at you and everything, it's just like, wait, wait a minute. I don't hate it anymore. Like, I, don't, I, don't, I wasn't ready for this. I wasn't prepared. I'm not saying the grass is not prepared, but it's a lot. So Fred, with his experience, will be able to tell his team, like, oh, guys, it's just another game. You know, it's just another game. Don't worry about it. It's just another game. But at the same time, they know. In the back of their minds, they know. This team, this school, this university, this basketball program, has never, never won a game really in this setting. setting. They know nope. that. And unfortunately, they could push themselves a little bit too hard to get that done. Because they said they want to be, this is the beginning of the they want to be the team that does that. But you have to take a step at a time. You have to take a step at a time. If they're doing the regular season, this is a different beast. This is a different monster. Like, like they're the big big team, team. they have a double body, they take their business in their first game, game. then they the, go up, they're up at half time against the solid Illinois squad, and then they just go left. left. Like, like it's, it, it was just a different feeling for them. I'm going to say that's why they lost, but that could be a real Let's take a break here. A lot to get to on that. I want to look at what's going on. Apart from Nebraska and Memphis, I want to look at the Big Ten's championship drought. It's been since 2000 since the, the Big Ten has won a national championship in this Basketball, plenty to get to end more here. This is the happy hour on that. If you're out of Buffalo, go wings and friends on 6 Like we just got a cup box still available. If you don't have fun plans, come say hi. Did you play as well? We're here all day, today, and tomorrow. Let's take time for the next one for the happy hour back to the morning. Walking down the avenue, 
Ticketfm.com. Follow Nick and Enrique on Twitter at Nick underscore Singer and then Radio Rico. Radio Rico. And now it's more than I was listening to Nick and Enrique on Ticketfm.com. Pre order your Hogwild Slow Smoke Deepster Ham today. Hogwild selects the highest quality whole ham and slow smokes them until they're tender and delicious. Our 100% walnut ham is approximately four pounds and fifty dollars. Pre order online at gohogwild.com. Quantities are limited. Hogwild Pit Barbecue, 3210 Cornhusker Highway in Lincoln. But don't be late, we come to me. 37 the ticket, Fox KFXL weather. Brought to you by Bryant Air Conditioning. Yeah. 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 Coming, coming in here. Twelve bowling lanes in the big pool room in Nebraska. Where else would you go to enjoy an afternoon or evening? The great daily specials: two dollar Tuesdays, the bowling, two rental, craft beers, and tacos, all just two dollars each. Have a delicious burger at EJ's Lounge before or after your bowling session, and you'll leave satisfied. Matthew's Bowling and Billiards Bowling is next to Everton Dutch. Big box stores are tempted to buy equipment for your high schooler and sports, or for yourself, or for your family. Why not go somewhere, why not go somewhere with new and used, used options? Great against sports is quality, slightly to gently used equipment, and 50% of your inventory is actually new equipment. And it's more than baseball, softball, and golf. They also have equipment for disc golf, fitness, hockey, and more. Plus, they're all fine products. Here you're done with money on the spot. Great against sports at 48th and Vine. Sand Hills Global is hiring. With their fast-paced growing culture, they have hundreds of new openings in sales, marketing, traveling support, software development, web design, and more. Full-time roles offer a four-and-a-half-day work week, along with flexible internships in most areas. Career and internship opportunities are available at our global headquarters in Lincoln, Nebraska. Find your fit today at www.sandhills.jobs. Ever wish you had another life? Another side of the room on a dark night? Better would you sleep in the ceiling? The high electric service is going to make your life a what if a reality. Whether you're looking for a place to look updated light fixtures or bright up your towers with under type of lighting, I like to handle all types of residential electrical installations and services. Give Erica a call or do 466-4600-high-electric.com to get started. Your home is your empire. Empire fans can provide privacy and improve the appearance of your home. Keep hidden pets in or out of your yard. Increase security and add value to your property. Visit empire fans.com now to view the stylish and faithful trade possibilities for your home. And get a free instant online quote. Let Empire Fence protect your empire. Sunday's off right with Sunday's Jeff and Nicole right Estick on Fitness Estic. Fanatics. Fanatic. Jeff and Nicole discuss health and wellness, wellness and how to achieve wellness, fitness goals, and more through the life of gym owners more. and gym coaches. Fitness Fanatics from 9 to 11 a.m. on Sunday. I need to seven the ticket at ticketfm.com. Working at Continental and Lincoln isn't a job, it's a career. And right now, they've raised wages again. Thank you for 
here. Still trade positions now for six per hour with opportunities to make more based on certification. Continental also has salary jobs available and great benefits, plus medical and prescription costs at very low premiums. Dental, vision, and life insurance are offered at no premium cost to the associates with increased bonuses and vacation for new hires. To learn more or apply, go to continentaljobs.com with keyword come work on Continental today. You're counting on your team to win. Why not prove it? At Warhorse Sportsbook, their win is your win. Put your money where your mouth is on nearly every sporting event. Use the Warhorse app to check out and build your bets before placing your wagers in person at Warhorse Casino in Lincoln for Horseman's Park in Omaha, including live in-game betting. No bets, no glory. Wagers may only be placed on Nebraska-based teams who played outside the state of Nebraska. Plus, be 21 or over the gamble. Gambling problem call 1-833-BETO. On the block with Stricken Austin. Now to tie it back to Nebraska men's basketball, this group has the chance to do something that hasn't been done before. Yeah. You know, in making a run in the Big Ten tournament, a serious run, in winning the first NCAA tournament game, but they're not going to get there by doing the same things they've always done. It is on this team to step up and change that narrative. It won't change on its own. Teams won't play over for you, and that's the mindset yeah. just we haven't consistently seen it. Weekdays from 2 to 4 on 93 7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. You're listening to coverage of the NCAA tournament live from Buffalo Wings and Rings at 6 and 0 on 93 7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. You're listening to the Happy Hour with Nick Sainer. Kirby, Kirby ate his oh, first yeah. food today, prompting a response of nothing but steaks all week. Then Enrique Alvarez Clare. No more peaches and carrots for Kirby the seven. Baby food be damned. The Empire Fence and Netting on 937 at Ticket and at TicketFM.com. Happy hour, happy hour, all day here, Buffalo Week. I know that's what I'm saying. There are going to be a lot of hours, and we are happy. So that makes them happy. We are right? sad. There we are. are. What? what? You are weird. For real. What are you? Ours is a kid that's being a little weird guy. A little weird guy. But I like it. Yeah, Tom Izzo, uh, uh, that, that team run through that tournament. Since then, I think they've been to play for seven. Michigan got there. Michigan got there. Michigan State got there against Carolina. Wisconsin got there in 2015. Because they didn't get to do. Yeah. Uh, but they haven't been able to get over the hump. Uh-huh. Is it a string of bad luck? Is it style of play? Is it lack of top tier talent? Why has the Big Ten won a national title since 2000? I mean, I just think it's, it's just. And it's, it's not bad, bad luck. luck. It's, uh, they're, 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 Plenty of talented talent teams to be big fan. Their style, style matches up a little against each other, other which you've seen in the last few years, and it doesn't match up very well for some, like a Purdue, in the, in the, in the tournament. tournament. But I, I think it's just, I mean, you lose. You don't win. Like, they, 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 they still don't have really talented teams. You make a tournament year after year. You know, a lot of them will make the day. A lot of them make the Super 16. A couple will make the Final Four. But you just... You're just, just running, running to better, better teams, 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 I guess. I, I, I would call it bad luck. I would call it anything, anything like that. It's just sometimes you lose. lose. And, and so the big time, unfortunately, it's been since the 2000s. You just keep losing. You keep losing. You keep doing things the right way. The right way. You keep getting them into the NCAA tournament, but they just can't figure it out in the tournament. I wouldn't say exactly that it's bad luck or anything. It's just not playing well in March. Let's, Let's go to the list of teams since the Michigan State in 2000 to make the national championship game. Just, just two years later, Maryland, Maryland Indiana. You, you are not allowed, allowed to play Maryland's title in the Big Ten final. No, 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 no,
New York Carolina, Carolina Southern Five, Illinois Seven, you think they can do it. That's the thing for the Big Ten. That's what they got away. Illinois plays in St. Louis, I think, every year or every other year, and they, they lost a national title game. There. Then, then two years later, later here's this. Florida goes, goes back to that in 2007. He beats Ohio State. State. Conley, Odin. Yep. That's that's I don't know if you hate it. Yeah, that's the one thing they could do. They got rolled. They only by nine, but they got rolled. The team that got rolled is in the state. 2009, they go up against North Carolina and lose them by 17. Then 2013 never happened. Sorry, Louisville, you don't get that one. There's an asterisk by you. No, it happened. No one saw it happen. No, it happened. That's it. And then you turned the bill. Let's go. I love it. I love it. I love it. Two people did that. The 2013 run for Louisville. Might, might not have happened, happened except now you're going to have to wear he came down on his leg and, and broke it. it. Snapped it. Snapped it. It was not pleasant. I think that was against Duke. Or did you play like a later? I think they played like a later. It was like, it was, it was in the tournament, wasn't it? Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. It was one of those race sports. No, it wasn't against Duke. I was right. It was a lead eight game. Yeah, yeah, he was on the wing trying to go up and block a, block a, block a shot, shot, and then he came yeah. down and landed yeah. on it. And, and, and Louisville went on the run from there. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I, that's, that's kind of one of those sliding doors moments, moments, because then in 2014, you had UConn and Kentucky, and that's the thing to do in 2015, though. It was maybe the Big Ten best run. You have Wisconsin as a one seed. That's up, up with, with that undefeated Kentucky. It was 30 no, going into that game. Kaminsky, Decker, Kaminsky, Trey Young, Jackson, I think Nigel Hayes was young on that team. But like they called you. If they were going to get a win in the national championship game, you feel like that was the game. Yes, yes 100%. That, that Wisconsin team seemed like they were going to go all the way and win the whole thing, especially when you have the player of the year for Frank Kaminsky, who ended up being in the lottery. He didn't know, like, he was in the lottery. Yeah, and ended up going, like, I want to say it was to care to, uh, uh, I got a question by Charlotte. Charlotte, yeah, it was to Charlotte. Um, but, but that, that team, team was, was just loaded with talent. talent. I mean, and yeah, yeah. If you want to think about, about you know, since that 2000 national championship, that was probably, I agree, with you, that was probably the Big Ten's best chance, and or at least their best team, one of their best teams, to make it and uh, end up falling to a uh, just a loaded potential. That team had it's a ton of other talent. They didn't even play a lot of minutes because they were so deep. The last Big Ten team. To appear in the title game, though, of course, would be Michigan in 2018. If you think about the uh, the year before, the 16 17 team, they were 26 and 12, 10 and 8 overall. Um, I believe that is the same. No, they lost to the Lucky and Lucy Tournament. Or the last game, they, they went to Nebraska yep. um, in the Big Ten Tournament. NCAA Tournament goes like this one point win over Oklahoma State. As a seven, four point win over second seed Louisville, and then a one point loss to Jordan Bell's Oregon. I think Peyton Pritchard was about like that. Probably. What do you think? No, he's more recently. Pritchard? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I looked at that team. So that Oregon team was 33 and 6, 16 and 2, back 12. Tyler Dorsey, Dylan Brooks, Jordan Bell, Dylan Ennis, Chris oh. Boucher, and yes, freshman Peyton Pritchard. I was wrong. Why do I do that? Yeah, come on. You did um, the college basketball game. Huh? Anyways, back, back on Michigan. So the next two events, Michigan goes 33 and 8, 13 and 5 in the Big Ten, but they finish fourth. Fourth in the Big Ten. That Big Ten. At 13 and 5. Loaded. Uh, and Michigan then makes the run. Here's their, their tournament pass. As a three seed in the West, beat Montana by 14. They survived Houston had a joint pool shot for the Red that was that year. They blitzed Texas A&M, funny enough, 9972. They get matched up with Florida State in the Elite Eight, 58 to 54. 19 oh, Florida State. Was so that, that, that uh, Florida State, like, all defensive team, old boy that went to Orlando? It was Phil Cooper, 
Ryan and Gogo Rodas and Terry Kamea were the three guys that scored double digits. Okay. Uh, Trent Forrest, MJ Walker, uh, Ufiandu Capitelli was on that team. Okay, there was a lot of Yeah, Anthony Flight, there's a name for you. Then um, Michigan, who did they match up with in the final four? Then? Michigan? Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. No, no, no. no, no. no, no. that was the national championship game. Oh, 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 by one. That was a good game. They, they destroyed Kansas State 78 62. And then Michigan gets it by a dozen 69 57. Then uh, Villanova gets on the board for its first title. No, yep. second title. They won in 16 and then in 18. That Villanova team, uh, led by your boy Brunson. Your. You have uh, Bridges, DiVincenzo, Spellman, Taha, Phil Booth, all underrated college guy, freshman Colin Gillespie, and freshman oh, Gillespie. That's a great that's good. Who was your favorite favorite player on that team? That's Joe Brunson. Was he at the time your favorite player on that team? It's Kachan. Okay. It's Kachan. I think that was our favorite player on that team. Joe Brunson was a little baby boy, little baby face. Vincenzo came off the bench. And hey, the big ragu. I tell you what, hey, you're gonna have those top three right there. You're gonna come to the, to the mix at some point. Mikael Bridges, just, just take a trip across the field. That's all you gotta do. He's one bridge. And he'll be right there. You gotta sneak Burris. But uh, that Villanova team, I think it was. No, it was the year before, or their first national title. Uh, we, in college, were, you know, making brackets. It was me, my roommate, and my now wife, who was my girlfriend at the time. And she picked Villanova to win. And we're looking at it like, oh, crazy? Like, there's no way Villanova wins this year. And sure enough, it just keeps going and going and going. And Villanova wins, and she's just standing there, and she goes, what? what are, I told you. I told you. I told you. I'm like, this is ridiculous. How dare you? But shout out to Rachel. Sometimes she's pretty good at what she does. It's also a Duke fan, very good at that. Yeah, so, make sure that Got some new people walking in here to win some rings. Make sure we get them a raffle ticket here. Yeah, more prizes yeah. to give away here. In, oh, 15, 20 minutes or so. Top of the hour, we'll be giving prizes away. All sorts of stuff to win uh, gift cards, appetizers, drinks, prize packs from the ticket, prize packs from Dr. Pepper. If uh, you got the right ping pong ball, you could win the big old chair big behind chair me. Right behind Rico, twisted T chair, perfect for uh, the summer that's coming up. Um, a A Ron, great question. We're gonna go through that list here when we get back to the happy hour. I'm Austin. He's Rico. This is the happy hour on 90% ticket brought to you by Empire Fence and you up to the He didn't want me to feel bad. He's getting close to that. Grab the ticket. Here's your guy right there. Nick. Nick. You're counting on your team to win. So why not prove it? Warhorse Sportsbook. Very Put your money where your mouth is and nearly like every sporting event. Choose the War Horse app to check out and build your bets before placing your wages in person at War Horse Casino in London or Horseman's Park in Omaha, including live season shows. No bets, no bets. We're going to need to play them back to the team. We're going to need to play them back to the team. We're going to need to play them back to the team. Am I going to eat another one? Yes, I am. What about Nick's not even doing his own show? What are we doing? What are we doing? That's what I was talking about. I'm not going to do this.
to distant lands for a well-deserved vacation. Wherever you go, one distraction could spell disaster. You can change your fate, adventurer. Don't drive distracted. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Start your Sundays off right with Jeff and Nicole Essink on Fitness Fanatics. Jeff and Nicole discuss health and wellness, how to achieve fitness goals, and more through the life of gym owners and gym goers. It's Fitness Fanatics from 9 to 11 a.m. on Sundays on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Hi, everyone. Kendall Warnock, A1 Automotive in downtown Lincoln. The last few years have been wild, but we've been here for you through all the ups and downs, and we'll be here for you when you need us the most. For all your travels and for your day-to-day -day driving. With winter conditions causing problems all over town, the last thing anyone needs this year is constant car troubles. Let us help you drive in peace and make sure you drive to work and to winter destinations safe. A1 Automotive, Leviton and L Street downtown, always honest answers. You're spending $300 a month. Binge drinking is the most common form of excessive drinking, which costs the United States more than $191 billion each year. By drinking less, you will save $300 a month. If you or a loved one is looking for help, find a treatment facility near you at findtreatment.gov. For immediate support, call, text, or chat 988. Brought to you by Nebraska DHHS in partnership with SAMHSA. You're listening to coverage of the NCAA tournament live from Buffalo Wings and Rings at 68th and 0 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. You're listening to The Happy Hour with Nick Sainert and Enrique alvarez Clary. When I gave you the cookie, I heard very clearly, I don't think about you, Schmidt. Why would I think about you? Because we're friends. We're not animals. We're men. The only time a man is allowed to think about another man is when that man is Jay Cutler. On 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Austin and Rico back with you, wrapping up hour one of the happy hours. I didn't hours. say happy hour, happy hours. Happy hours. We're sticking with you. It's fine. We're sticking with us. We appreciate you. If you have any thoughts, again, our text line is still open and available for you. 402-464-5685. Thanks to Sardar Heyman Jewelers for that. And our video streams. Uh, we do have the comment section pulled up over there. We do see you. We can get to you as well. We're going to go to our text line here real quick. Um, a. a Ron, how many schools who excel in football are consistently making runs at NCAA basketball championships? A. a. Ron, I would need you to define excel because uh, just to start the conversation here, here's a list of the college basketball teams with the most national championships. UCLA right. has 11. 
Do they excel at football? No. Kentucky? No. Kentucky's pretty solid, though. No. That, Mark no, you, said, be a, you said excel. But what, what what is excel? Compete for national championships? Yes. Compete for top tier bowl Compete games? Compete like top 15 year, top 15 year after year. Okay, North Carolina? No. Duke? No. Indiana? No. UConn? Definitely LOL. Not. <laughs> Definitely not. Kansas? No. Villanova? Nope. Cincinnati? Yeah. No. Florida? Yes. Now we're talking. Yeah. Louisville? Thing. No, I want to. I love. Dude, I love Louisville. Like that's my like. I don't know why, but I'm a big, big Louisville guy. Michigan State? Uh, eh, no, they're fringe. North Carolina State? No, I love Oklahoma North- State. North Carolina State should be a Big Ten team. Should they though? They should. I don't know why. I have no reasoning for it. When we were going through the whole expansion thing, and people were like, "What teams do you want?" There was like Notre Dame and this and USC and this team and Florida State, and I was like. North Carolina State, and they're like, "Why?" And I go, "I don't know. They're just they just they just radiate Big Ten to me." Interesting. I feel like most people would say it's like a Virginia, Virginia no. Tech that's more big. I don't want I don't want Virginia. Virginia Tech could, but North Carolina State is just that. That's that's the I don't know why. That's a Big Ten team to me. Their football style is very Iowa. Uh, Peyton Wilson was a little bit. He had drafted very high. Um, and then San Francisco. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm with you on. Do that they one. have football? I don't believe so, but but here let's let's frame the question even a different way here, okay. Rico. Hit me up. What about like Alabama and Auburn? Those are consistent top four seeds in the NCAA tournament uh-huh. at football schools. Did, did, are, does that enough excelling at football? Alabama obviously excels at football, uh-huh. but neither one of them has been a legit national title contender in basketball, which is where to me I'm willing to give Auburn, Alabama the benefit of the doubt. I'm willing to give Florida State. Carolina and Florida State is not a serious contender in basketball. They were they had for a couple a bit. years. It, to me, the question is who is willing to invest in both basketball and football? Ohio State? They haven't won a national title, but they've been close. They're pretty, they're, you know, well, if you aside throw Ohio from the State last... in there, if they're Iowa in there, does Iowa belong in that conversation? No, because they don't have. What about Wisconsin? They're close that Wisconsin before Iowa. That's what I would do. I think Wisconsin basketball is, is is better than Iowa, has a higher ceiling, has shown the ability to get to a national title as they've done it before. And their football team, although you know, a couple down years, fire their coach, got a new coach, um, has Say shown, hi to Nick's eyeball has shown stream, yeah, hi Nick, has shown the ability to make it to top tier bowl games and actually win them as opposed to Iowa making it to top tier bowl games and losing to to um Team, you know, making it to the Rose Bowl and losing to a Pac-12 team, or or making it to a, a decent bowl game and losing to another uh, an out-of-conference team. Is Oregon so, a football would, school or a basketball school? It's a track school, I know. It's but... a track school, yeah. Like obviously, um, I would say, oh, that's tough. That's, do, do they count for the purposes they of this are, conversation? They are that that perfect mix of good enough in basketball and good enough in football to be a problem in both sports, but never really. That's how, you know, they made the national championship in, in football and they've had some really good teams in basketball, but never really seriously contend year after year after year for national championships until, you know, football's starting to get it going. But basketball with Dana Altman has just been that fringe team for so long. Washington. Mm, football. They've Washington. had a, they've had too many. Uh, you had the number one, number two overall pick and you had a losing season. Like, you did. That was pretty impressive. Boise State. Football. Known for football, but football's taking a bit of a downturn. Football has taken a downturn. Basketball's turn. made a good number of NCAA tournaments recently. That's not nice, still a football school. When you think Boise State, you think football. You think the blue turf, and maybe it's just Chandler because of the Hutchinson blue turf. begs to differ. But you, nah. Tyson Dagenhart nah, begs bro. to differ. Boise State is a football school. They've made three straight NCAA tournaments. They made it in 14, 15, 12, 13, 2007, 2008 as well. No, nah, that's a football That's um, a football school. San Diego State. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good They have. They have turned more into a basketball school but to me that the football program is just good enough to always be interesting but their basketball team has been making some serious some serious runs at changing people's minds uh in in terms of what kind of school they are san diego state is a basketball school first is of all it's a tony gwynn baseball school they made it <laughs> from two, the 2010 to the 2015 tournaments okay under steve fisher uh, missed it with a, a weak strength of schedule, 
and then a, a mediocre record. Made it Brian Dutcher's first year. Missed it in 18-19. Went 30-2 and two in the year COVID canceled the tournament. Mm. They've made it every year since then. Now, I'd be pit- I, look, so many teams just pissed in that COVID year. I, I need to pull this year up because I'm extremely curious. We'll, we'll do that after the break. Yeah, we'll do it, um, yeah. We're not going to break yet, Bill. Don't hit the button. Um, Keep it here. San Diego State, to me, is a basketball school. It's not not close. Utah is a football school. Mm-hmm. Utah State. It's basketball. Okay. BYU. Neither. That's just BYU. They're just decent at everything. They're just they're, – they're, BYU is pretty clearly a football school. They're like – they're – they're one of the. They're like Oregon, where they're really good at both, but never really national championship contenders. But they'll they do enough to scare just about everybody they have to face. Creighton fans would say they're a football school too, because they're Husker fans at their core. <laughs> Which, by the way, they're in a dogfight with Akron. The Zips are only down by two. It's twenty-one to nineteen. Creighton at just about the halfway point of the first half. Can I say something that's going to make people rim. mad at me? Um, isn't that every time you open your mouth? You ain't wrong. I picked Creighton in the final four. I was closer than I wanted to be to doing it's that. T- it's this is a good Creighton team. They're very well balanced. Um, how about this, this from Augie on the text line? What about Clemson? Clemson's not a basketball school. That's a football school, and their basketball team is not good enough to to warrant any type of dis. I guess dis- not to like you know rain on your parade, Augie, or be sound rude, but I, I don't think there's any discussion on on what kind of school they are. And I don't think their basketball team is good enough for, for you to sit there and say, oh, you know, they're they're decent enough in basketball and football. No, they're just a football school. Um, I tend I, I tend to agree with that. Credit to Brad Brownell for saving his job a couple times in the last few, four or five years. Um, but it's absolutely still a football school, even back to the Danny Ford days. Mm-hmm. D-Ron calls you a J-sker. I think you're a Lopesker. Is that a thing? I'm you not a Bud J- Sign Horse. Yeah, shout out, to, shout out to UNK, baby. Uh, I'm not a J-sker. I grew up, look. I grew up in Omaha rooting for Creighton because, I'll be honest, I said it on the air before, didn't even know Nebraska had a basketball team until I got to high school and found out Eric Strickland went to the same high school I went to. <laughs> so um, so to me, like, it was it was Creighton everything. I wanted to go to Creighton and then found out Nebraska had a basketball team. And, like, I'll root for them. But, like, to me, it's just I want the state of Nebraska to do well. I don't care who, who does well. Like, Nebraska, you know, win your first tournament game, make a run, whatever. Creighton, make a run. Like, I'd still be happy. I'm not mad at it. Not gonna like. I'm not gonna openly root for them, unless they're playing like North Carolina. Then I will. Right. Like, can we all get on board of like if if Creighton plays like North Carolina, if Creighton plays North Carolina or or Duke, like you're rooting for Creighton unless yeah. you're Austin. Uh, Creighton, North Carolina, Creighton, Iowa, Iowa, North Carolina, Wisconsin, North yeah. Carolina. Like you're rooting for Creighton if they play Texas, Iowa. Texas, North Carolina, Texas, Creighton. Yeah. My only rooting interest is the heat death of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will not pick a side. Both teams I lose. I will be equally disappointed if either team wins. You know what, though? Or loses. You know what, actually, though? Actually, I'll, go, I'll, I'll say this. Give me Texas. I will root for Texas you before are, I ever root for Creighton. You are ridiculous, I will Austin. root for Texas before yeah, I ever you root see, for Creighton. You see Nick's face? Ridiculous. That was you. That's Nick's I agree with you face. I'm that not was going not, to say it on That was not his agree with you That's face. That's absolutely but you, But you know what we can agree on? The shoes that Creighton got for their NCAA tournament, the off-whites, uh, Nebraska needs to switch to Nike. Like, come on. What are we doing? What are we doing? I don't necessarily disagree. Um, Make the switch. Make the switch. Let's see. Um, Dave, on the text line, yes. Um, I would say maybe wait till next week, though, just to be safe. Um, yeah, let's just wait till next week just to be safe. And then the last one before we go to break, Augie asked about was Miami. Football Ooh. or basketball? Oh, that's a – is Larry Nagus still there? Yes. They're they're a sneaky basketball school, but I think I'd still lean football. I think you know Miami for football. And here's the thing: as as good as they were in like the mid 2010s, so uh, Frank Haith took them to one NCAA tournament. Jim Laraniega has been there since 2012, 11, 12. Mm-hmm. Um, lost in a Sweet 16, lost in a Sweet 16, two first round exits, lost an Elite Eight, lost a Final Four. People forget Miami was in the Final Four last year. I totally forget about that. Like, that doesn't compute. Miami has been much better under Jim Laranega than they have since... People forget Leonard Hamilton was there. Leonard Hamilton was at Miami? Yeah, Leonard Hamilton was there in the 90s. He what? was there their last year as an independent. He brought him into the Big East, Rico. Dang. Yeah. So, old Leonard people got him f- going. Hey, people forget Miami was in the Big East. People do forget that. 
That's where the uh, Miami Virginia Tech rivalry really blossoms. It's a weird rivalry. It really is. I don't even know <laughs> if it's a rivalry. Let's ask. Uh, DP will be able to tell us. DP would be able to tell us. Jay would be able to tell us. Yep. Like VT is not Miami's chief rival by any means. Um, but yeah, Miami is absolutely a, a football school with an ascending basketball team. All that to say, to bring this discussion to a close, why can't Nebraska get to the Auburn, Alabama, Miami sphere of things? You can be a football school. You can be known for football. Like you're not going to be known for men's or women's basketball anytime soon, mm-hmm. but it shouldn't stop you from investing and becoming a both school. That's the point mm-hmm. I'm trying to make here. Yeah. Yeah. I can get, I can get on board with that. There's no reason why a school that's really talented at one sport. Yeah, like if you're, if you're a basketball school, if you're North Carolina or Duke, uh, Kansas, which Kansas has, has begun, you know, leaning more into football, you know, with the, with the stadium upgrades, new new uh, locker rooms and, and the such that they're going with um, after some successful football seasons. There's no reason why you shouldn't be able to not not turn yourself into a boat school, but just have enough success in the other sport to, to maybe have a discussion like we're having right now. Like, mm-hmm. are you a basketball school? Are you a football school? You know, and, and just have the, the, the back and forth with that. Score update before we go to break. Michigan State by 15 over Mississippi State. Just Sheesh. under seven minutes to go uh, in the West first round. That game being played in uh, DP's old stomping grounds of Charlotte. Uh, Mississippi State just hit both free throws. So now it's a two-touchdown lead. Akron and Creighton nodded at 27. Eight minutes to go in the first half. And it's an eight-point game, 38-30, to 30, 11 seed Duquesne over six seed BYU. Ooh, There's a scrap in BYU. Hey, what's up? They are getting after it Get him. on the floor. We are in official review. We will tell you the results of this official review from BYU Duquesne. That game going on, of course, in Omaha. When we get back, hour two of the happy hour next. You're listening to coverage of the NCAA tournament live from Buffalo Wings and Rings at 68th and 0 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Follow Nick and Enrique on Twitter at Nick underscore Sainter and at Radio Rico AC. More of Happy Hour is next on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Ever wish you had another light switch on the other side of the room on a dark night? How much better would you sleep at night if you had a ceiling fan in your room? The High Electric Service Department is here to make your electrical what-ifs a reality. Whether you're looking to replace some outdated light fixtures or brighten up your counters with under-cabinet lighting, High Electric can handle all types of residential electrical installations and services. Give Erica a call at 402-466-6606 or visit high-electric.com to get started. Mosaic is a nonprofit whole person healthcare organization that embraces God's call and relentlessly pursues opportunities that empower people with diverse needs to live their best lives. Mosaic in Southeast Nebraska, serving Lincoln and Beatrice, would like to invite you to their monthly Discover the Possibilities Tour events. Events are held on the third Wednesday of every month and are a great way to understand Mosaic's mission. To RSVP, please contact Melindy at 402-429-0088 or visit mosaicinfo.org slash Southeast Nebraska. Hi folks, Sean Callahan here for Couple Chevrolet GMC and the Chevrolet and GMC Truck Month is now underway. We've got huge savings in Louisville. Get 9000 off or 1.9% for 72 months on select models. Yes, you heard right. That's 9000 off or 1.9% for 72 months happening right now at Koppel. So take that short money saving drive down 144th Street or check us out online at koppelcars.com. You'll be glad you did. All deals with proof credit. Stock number G214773. 937 the ticket. Fox KFXL weather. Sponsored by John Henry's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. A Lincoln forecast for today, a few flurries possible this morning. Otherwise, mainly cloudy and breezy today with an afternoon high around 56. Tonight, a chance of showers. Otherwise, mainly cloudy with a low around 39. And tomorrow, decreasing clouds will be breezy too with a high around 52. I mean, you're all just Kyle Buck, 93.7 to ticket and the ticket fm.com. Working at Continental in Lincoln isn't a job, it's a career. And right now, they've raised wages again, and they're hiring for production operators at $24.62 per hour, which grows to $28.97 per hour within three years. Skilled trade positions now start at $33.36 per hour, with opportunities to make more based on certifications. Continental also has salary jobs available and great benefits, plus medical and prescription costs at very low premiums. Dental, vision, and life insurance are offered at no premium cost to the associates, with increased bonuses and vacation for new hires. To learn more or apply, go to ContinentalJobs.com with keyword Lincoln. Come work at Continental today. 
You never think cancer will happen to you. I smoked for over 40 years. My doctor recommended that I get annual lung cancer screening. They were able to catch my cancer at stage one. It's never too late to quit. Even if you're still smoking, you need to ask your doctor about annual lung cancer screening. Just 30 minutes a year could save your life. Call the Nebraska Tobacco Quit Line. 1-800-QUIT-NOW. 1-800-784-8669. Paid for by Tobacco Free Nebraska. Aired with the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and this station. Are you in the market for a new garage door or need to repair your old one? It's winter time, and that means snow, wind, and freezing temperatures. All things that can cause sticky locks and damage to your garage door. If you're experiencing any issues with your commercial or residential garage door during the winter months, call Cameron Hall and his team at Doors Plus. Don't be trapped outside in the cold because of a poorly maintained garage door. Call Doors Plus today at 402-590-5800 or visit them online at doorsplusllc.com. Doors Plus, garage doors and more. Okay, it's time to sell the house. How do we even begin to choose from the hundreds of realtors in town? Easy. We make a pros list. You mean a pros and cons list? No, just a pros list. We need someone with pro photography to showcase the house in the best possible way. Pro marketing to make sure we get maximum exposure. Pro negotiations so we know we get the best price. This is one of those times where you already know the right answer, isn't it? You know it is. Ben Bleicher and Professional Realty Group. Contact Ben Bleicher and the team at Professional Realty Group of Berkshire Hathaway's Home Services Ambassador online at prg-ne.com. This is Brad with Midwest Bank, proudly serving our Nebraska communities for over 70 years. We're a community bank, making local decisions, supporting local organizations, and helping local businesses and farms succeed. We are dedicated to serving our clients and helping to meet their financial needs with sound, innovative banking solutions. From an array of checking and deposit accounts, cash management services, to small business, real estate, and ag lending. We're here for you. Your community, your bank, Midwest Bank. Find out more at MidwestBank.com. Member FDIC. Your home is your empire. Protect it with Empire Fence. Get a free instant quote with the online estimating tool at Empire-Fence.com. See an upfront estimate with no hidden fees. An Empire Fence can provide privacy and improve the appearance of your home. Keep kids and pets in or out of your yard. Increase security and add value to your property. Visit empire-fence.com now to view the stylish and maintenance-free possibilities for your home and get a free instant online quote. Let Empire Fence protect your empire. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet. KNTK FM Firth, 93.7 The Ticket. You're listening to coverage of the NCAA tournament live from Buffalo Wings and Rings at 68th and 0 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. This is the happy hour. You guys know the happy hour? Coming at you live from the heart of Lincoln, America. Yeah, I'll maybe I'll come for a couple. Here are your hosts, Nick Sainert. I am a huge guy. And Enrique Alvarez Clary. C is for chunk. Brought to you by Empire Fence and Netting on 937 the ticket and the ticketfm.com. We're back on the happy hour. Don't mind me hijacking these two guys' show. How dare you? It's just just who I am. It's just what I do. Osh Norman, Rico, Nick. Gentlemen, what a day. What a day. What a day. This has what been a, a blast. Day. This is like your birthday and Christmas all rolled into one if you're a college basketball yeah. fan. Big oh, fan. Even Josh, casually. Yeah. Big fan. I can take it. Yeah. And I mean, and, and the games have been competitive to this point, right? Like, that's that's what you – it is incredible just on, on the surface here that every single tournament, every single year, and every single Thursday, the games are competitive. Mm-hmm. And maybe there's one that's a double-digit differential – but I mean, it's Michigan State, Michigan starting State out right now. That's that's what I'm saying. And so you, you already have, um, I mean, so many competitive games. It's Mich- yeah, Michigan State, like you said, that's Izzo time. We're on Izzo March, <laughs> January, right? February, March. But but man, you're you're doing, you have competitive games with Akron and Creighton, which will make a lot of Husker fans happy. You have a, a single digit ball game with. Uh, with uh, Duquesne and BYU. Duquesne stretched it to 13. Did BYU yeah. crawl back in it? I think they did. I think they did. BYU. It was so. after the fight. <laughs> yeah, just which was completely unnecessary. They fell down on the ground, and all they did was he just, like, threw an elbow into him. Really? Unnecessary. It was, there was no word said. It was nothing. It was just perfectly fine. Uh, there I am. To, to lead there off this is. hour, I'm going to do this. You see the bracket behind us with uh, the other teams in Memphis. So we yeah. know Nebraska and Texas A&M are in Memphis. We'll see. Um, 
Okay, Rico's getting back in the chair or handing it over one of the two. We, we wish we could take it home. We wish we could take the chair home. I I said July 4th. That yes. that that chair with July 4th is perfect. Don't jump, Rico. Don't yeah. jump in it. Rico, we got it. We got we got a in here. Hold, Hold on. on. I gotta, Stretch it out. I gotta, yep. okay. Over as far as it's tall. It's here. big. There we go. Get All right, there we go. There There's we Rico. Big uh, chill. No clue. It sit, look, it, uh. You could. You guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys get out of there, Rico. We'll, we'll let them take a picture. They want to sit in the chair. I yep. bet. Let's <laughs> let them. We can get you back in here. There you, there you go. go, Rico. Here's your chair. I'll just stand right here. It's fine. Your chair. Um, All right. Anyway, so yeah, taking look a look at the other games in in Memphis specifically. Yeah. So Nebraska, Texas A and M. We know Houston, Longwood. Yeah. Let's start with that game. Houston, a number one seed in contention for the number one overall seed, mm-hmm. get blasted by Iowa State in finals of the, the Big Twelve Conference tournament. But they rate out as a metrics darling. Ken Palm loves them. Bart Torvik loves them. Yeah. But they're not deep. They're not big, and they're not deep. You've been on the Longwood train. You think Longwood has a chance to make that game interesting. Do you I actually mean, believe it? I I guess. I, I don't know. I mean, here's the thing I will say about just 16 and upsets in general, right, is that it's happened. It happened two times now in history. It's not necessarily common, but it's also just more and more possible by the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess so. And so I think um, there's a lot of metrics that get involved in, in analytics and weird, funky statistics uh, when March Madness comes around about how, you know, top 40 in offensive and defensive efficiency, 18 teams have won the national title. And like these weird little uh, statistics that, you know, people somehow look at like the Bible and, and hold, you know, that to truth. And so um, wh- wherever you land on that, Houston, we know their identity, right? They sco- they don't score maybe the, the a ton of points, but, but man, they can. they can defend. Yeah, they can, and but man, they can defend. They yep. can defend so well. Houston and UConn are basically mirror images of each other. I think Houston has a, a, the number 16 offense in the country, number yeah. one defense. UConn's the number one offense and the number 13 or 19 defense. The other games in Memphis then, Clemson, New Mexico, and Baylor, Colgate. Let's start with that one. Baylor strikes me as Nebraska, but just a little better across the board. Mm-hmm. A lot of guys, no big superstar, can put up points. If you're going to get them, it's going to be on the defensive end. They forget to pack their bags and travel. Yeah. I love Colgate. Really? I'm a Crest Toothpaste guy. I have guy. not found. So, so I'm not I picking have, Colgate. I have not found somebody that likes Colgate. I like Colgate. The basketball team. The basketball team. I yeah. hate Colgate. The Crest Toothpaste guy. Give but, me yeah. sense, Sensodyne. Oh, you're Sensodyne. Oh, what? Wow. See, we're, we don't all make that Rico money that wow. we can afford the Sensodyne. <laughs> First off, <laughs> again, I'm the only one dentist. here on the show without a title, so let's go there. <laughs> hey, first off, my dentist was just like, "This is good toothpaste." You should use. I was like, "I bet." Yeah, you ever wonder with those when it's like nine out of ten dentists agree that this is, but like, why would the dentist want you to have a good toothpaste to have good teeth? Because then you wouldn't be going to the dentist. The dentist well, no. So still, maybe if the nine out of go to the dentist, nah, man. Senior. Maybe nine out of ten dentists agree because it's messing with teeth. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Big anyway, toothpaste is out to I'm just show. saying, big um, please, please dentists out there weigh in. Careful now. 464. <laughs> I need dentists right now. Um, Colgate anyway, Colgate, has made though. Yeah, sorry. The 2019, 21, 22, 23, and now 2024 tournaments. They've wow. been a 15 for the most part, but they've been a 14 recently as well. They were very close in 2022 to knocking off three seed Wisconsin. They pushed that game into the last minute. They end up losing 67 to 60. I don't think they get it done today. Yeah. But, guys, out of that West region, I wouldn't mind going to Memphis to watch Baylor because I think that's a Final Four caliber team. That's that's interesting that you say that. And now you have where also Scott Drew has been in, in conversation about jobs and potential uh, relocation for Scott Drew, which is kind of mind-boggling, right? Like, he's built that Baylor program up to a, a – consistent strength mm-hmm. right and consistent success that you're also in a good conference like moving to the acc and may- maybe austin since you're a duke guy you can tell me this is that really a jump up a uh, big 12 to acc not if right you now. were to go to louisville I-, I don't feel like it would be so louisville's a jump up the acc is yeah. not acc is not okay but so what i would say here is this like when you look at scott drew now all that's done he he they they announced we're done it's he's not moving anywhere he is baylor's coach i think that plays a factor going into a tournament i also think it's strategic that said hey we're going to announce that he's not going anywhere uh before we uh before the the NCAA tournament i would also say this 
completely sidebar here. I'm watching Arizona and Long Beach State right now. The beach. And the the Long Beach State story is yeah. fascinating. <laughs> the, the coach comes out. They part ways. We know the whole, whole – everything that happened there. Coach comes out this week in the press conference. is like, I'm like a George Costanza on a Seinfeld episode where he tries to get fired. He keeps showing up to work, and they keep telling me how good of a job <laughs> I'm doing. And so he, he made some jokes that way. He it's, opened the press conference up with like, I don't have to answer anything. I'm pretty much working for free. Questions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that is just that's just wild that you have in this day and age of, of collegiate athletics where it's you're so quickly on the chopping block when you're not having success. First of all, Long Beach State wins their conference, but now second of all, you've still selected. You're like, yeah, okay, we told you that we'd let you finish out the season. Long Beach State's coach is playing for their, his next job right now, or is coaching for his next and job right now. He's been there for a long, very long time. time. He's been I mean, at Zaga for two years, made one NCAA tournament with Minnesota, and then has been at Long Beach State since the 2007 2008 season. Yeah. If you're him, and if you're Long Beach, like, okay, first off, if you're Long Beach State, the administrators and the AD, is there any way that you try to go back and be like, hey, like, I know we said that you're fired, but like, what you just did was remarkable. I don't think you let's can. Try and, but like, well, yeah, but like you do that, but like if you're him, there's you're you're gonna say no regardless. Uh, I also right? I also right. think oh, yeah. yeah, you yeah. do. If I, the school comes crawling back to you, you say, No, you fired me. Exactly. Okay, I'll take uh, my buyout. See ya. We do have our first final score in the NCAA tournament. Michigan State defeats Mississippi State sixty nine to fifty one. How about this? Nice sixth, sixth, excuse me, straight round of sixty four win for Tom Izzo. Wow. He has won in the round of 64 six straight times. Whoever that has Mississippi bonkers. State. I'm sorry. I had Mississippi State. Um, I went back and forth on that one. I, I did different too. Different brackets. I think I had both teams. I, so. I, I went back and forth. So Mississippi State will play the winner of Wagner and North Carolina, which is going to be coming up Wagner. in about 30 minutes or Wagner. so. Wagner. 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 Franz Wagner. <laughs> yeah. But nonetheless, uh, update in Creighton and Akron. Creighton is back up on top 39 to 34. Duquesne continues to keep BYU at arm's length, 46-36 Arizona and Long Beach State. Five-point different, five point differential there, six-point differential, rather, at 17-11 Wildcats on top of Long Beach State. So I'm pretty, pretty sure I went picked, on a little run, too. They're up 39-34 late first half. Yeah, they were yeah. down. I'm pretty sure I picked uh, BYU to win, but then I saw that Duquesne hadn't been in the NCAA tournament since 1977. Yeah, and now I want Duquesne to go to the Elite Eight and bust my racket. I don't care. I'm pretty sure the the winner of that Duquesne game gets yes. So they're playing in Omaha, as we know. Yep. Duquesne, the winner Illinois of that Moorhead. one gets Illinois or Moorhead. I, I find it. What do you guys think Illinois is for this tournament? Wild card, because he, we we've seen it time and time again where. Illinois, they can they can put different type of types of lineups out there too. Where if they bring in like Danger off the bench, then they can provide more maybe of a presence down low. Um, we also have seen the Terrence Shannon Jr. takeover, right, where he can quickly spurt for for thirty plus points on any given night, and also draw you know a million fouls while doing so. Thirty three free throws. Um, I so <laughs> where, what's your guys' take and position on on the fight in the line I going in because. As what we saw in the Big Ten tournament, I see Terrence Shannon kind of rolling through that Omaha bracket. If you lean on Terrence Shannon Jr. and if the referees give him the calls that, you know, he plays a very physical style of basketball where he's trying to get foul calls. He's looking, he's really good at at drawing fouls by using different movements and keeping people off balance. If the referees give him those foul calls, I don't see why Illinois couldn't come out of Omaha as the as the victors of that region. Like it. He's such a dangerous scorer, and if you're also not allowed to touch him, then you've got a bunch of problems on your hands. So if they give him the calls, if he's playing tournament, I don't see a reason why Illinois doesn't come out of Omaha. Illinois is absolutely a wild card to me. We, we see their talent. We see their style of play because I think they're better defensively than they've shown, but maybe they're just not. Like I would think that the combination of Hawkins and Danger in the interior, Gary A's athleticism, and Terrence Shannon Jr. as well, yeah. They should Damask be able to, is so uh, is not talked steady enough. operator. Underrated. Yeah. Um, offensively, they can hang with anyone in the country. Yeah. They also are like bottom five percent in the country at defending the rim. So if you're giving up a parade of layups and not blocking any, that's a tough way to survive. I can see them beating Morehead State. I could see them. You know, I, I have BYU beating them in the next round. Need the Cougs to pick that up for me. Uh, if that's going to happen. But still we know minutes. Illinois' talent level is there. Where 
I think they're more athletic and maybe more dangerous than Iowa State. I think they're more established than Iowa State. As much Ooh. as I like the Cyclones, I think Illinois has a little more pedigree. I think Brad Underwood has more tournament pedigree than even TJ Otzelberger right now. Ooh. But at the same time, they're not invincible. Moorhead State could trip them up. BYU could outshoot them. Duquesne could muddy the game up, kind of like they're doing against BYU right now. Drake, I think Tucker DeVries could give them yeah. some problems, potentially. So, Illinois, given how dependent they were on the whistle in the Big Ten tournament and didn't win any games that big, they scare me in that they could be a Final Four team or we could be done talking about them after tomorrow. And, and it's so fascinating with Illinois because you, you look at that Big Ten tournament and they were down by 20-plus against Ohio State the day before Nebraska. And then they were down by 15-plus against Nebraska. Mm-hmm. And, and they came back both times. And, and they ended up knocking off both of those teams. It's a dangerous way to live. I, it, it is a dangerous way to live. But it also, I think, shows their ability offensively, like you mentioned, Austin. The clutch factor that they have, the ability to not well, let their hearts, yeah. you know, race too fast and, and get too ahead of themselves and realize, like, look, we got a whole second half to go. Like, it doesn't matter, you know, what happens in this first half as long as we keep it close enough where our offense, like you said, a really good offense, can can get things rolling at some point and get us right back into this matchup. How's this? Here's this for a stat, CBS Sports College Basketball. Most NCAA tournament wins as a worst seed. Tom Izzo atop the list, 17 wins as a worst seed all time is the most. Jim Beheim with 15 in second, then Raleigh Massimino and Lute Olsen with 11 each. So that speaks to give Tom Izzo a week. Yeah. Watch out. I was going to say, does that is that saying that he's just really good in the postseason or he's really bad in the regular season? Both. Ridiculous. Be a be a higher seed. I, I need to go. Let me let me scroll back through Michigan State's tournament history because when we think of Michigan State as a blue blood to some degree, you think they would be a consistently high seed, but I don't know yeah. if that's necessarily the truth. Okay, so I mean, if you're a, a four seed or a five or a four seed, and you got to okay, go. So up Izzo took those over seeds. in 2000, 1999, 2000. Yep, they've been a one, one, ten. There you go. Seven, seven, five, six, nine, five, two, five, ten, one, three, four, seven. Two nine three two eleven seven seven nine, and if I remember Jeez. correctly, that one of those years that they were a two, they lost Middle Tennessee. Mm-hmm. They lost to Middle Tennessee. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I just think Izzo Izzo does a uh, a really good job at, um, at at just getting his team right. Like that's 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 crazy thing with us, or not? Excuse me, not us. This year when we saw Michigan State and the way we we're talking about them this year it was like. This is one of Tom Izzo's not I don't want to say worst teams, not greatest teams. Yeah, like, you could say worse. I mean, it makes it's it's, it's, it's right. Sort of like they what, what what was some of the things that they did really well? Austin, you and I agreed that maybe that game in Lincoln back on December 10th was one of the more fundamental basketball games that we've seen. Mm-hmm. And Nebraska did a really good job against Michigan State it felt like this year when Michigan State is one of the best teams at scoring in transition or scoring fast after a made bucket. Nebraska did really, really well at trying to slow them down. And Jamarcus got one of his own. They did. To answer. So Michigan State, to me, if even if you think of them as that transition team, it doesn't feel like they've done that as much this year, where yeah. they're more reliant on Walker, even Hogarth in the half court. And Michigan State's game plan against Nebraska was Malik Hall. Yeah. They got him matched up on ranked mass defensively. They played him at the five for a stretch because Izzo didn't trust his big men. <laughs> But Nebraska countered by saying, okay, rink mask, dominate these last five minutes. Here you go. And he did. Feast. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me ask you guys this. Who's the Big Ten team before we go to break? Who's the Big team, Big Ten team that makes it the farthest? I want to pick against Purdue because they keep letting me down. But this team just – and I mean, it was the same as last year. This team looks like they're primed to make a deep run in March. So I want to pick Purdue, but I think that – Brad Underwood and Illinois make it the farthest. It's okay. not Northwestern. Okay, since you brought up the Wildcats, are they around a 32 type of team? They get past UConn. That's their next well, matchup. Well, I mean, that's, that's, I guess that is this um, round 32. They ain't getting past can, UConn. Can, we play, can, can, I, can I throw my feeler out here for future Big Ten team Oregon? Ooh. No, because they're not a Big Ten you, team. You yet. think they knock off six seed South Carolina to start? Yes. I'm not guaranteed. I'm not guaranteeing it. I'm curious about that game. 
And then whether it's Creighton or Akron, like if it's the Dana Bowl, yeah. do you put it past Dana to beat Creighton? Because I don't. I don't, no, I do not. So, I also like this I, is this is going to make people probably furious, but like. If Creighton shoots the way that they shot in Lincoln and the way that they shot against UConn at the CHI Health Center, very few teams can stick up with them. The the way it makes people furious is if you say you're picking it and you love it. I don't the, love it. Okay, I, there they, you go. They, 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 I, I picked if, it. If you're, if you're rational and talking facts, I picked I, it. I, I don't love I, it, but I picked, I picked it. it. I picked it, and I like it. I don't love it. There you I, go. I, I picked it, and I, and I do not enjoy I do not enjoy it. I, so. feel, I feel good about it. Is that is that better? Yeah. No, that um, tells me you, you actually enjoy picking if you feel good about it. No, I just feel I just feel good feel about them. About it. Yeah, I feel confident about that. That's what I mean. Like I feel like I picked them to make it as far as I did. When I picked them in the final four, and I feel like they can actually do that. One thing I am confident about, gentlemen, is that Buffalo Wings and Rings on 68th and O is the place to be. Here. Buffalo Wings and Rings, 68th and O. We are here until 6 p.m. today and tomorrow. Come watch the games with us all day today. Uh, the ping pong balls are unfortunately gonzo. We had a question that if we draw ping pong balls tomorrow too, that is not true. That's so uh, whoever went on Reddit and said that, uh, that is not true. Um, <laughs> if your team, however, for those for those four final four teams that of uh, people that drew the ping pong ball, they get prizes. The champion part of their prize pack is this giant twisted T chair. This thing that right you behind see me. behind us. Um, that Rico has sat in multiple times. We're also giving away prizes at the top of every hour from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. both days. No purchase necessary for what? Nothing. Did I say something? We both heard it. Yeah. I don't know how you did it. It was impressive. We are both giving away prizes at the top of every hour from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. both days. Uh, no purchase necessary. Anyone who stops by gets a raffle ticket when they sit down at their table appetizers, beer buckets, beer pitchers, a Coors Light backpack cooler, uh, Dr. Pepper prize packs, 93.7, the ticket prize packs, a lot more. Uh, great food, great beer, great prizes, and really good sports talk as well. Here we go. All right, let's take a break. Uh, happy hour. We'll see if uh, we want to get some other guys sitting down, give you guys a little bit of a breather, enjoy some food from Buffalo Wings and Rings, and we'll come back, come stop by, 68th and 0. We'll be right back on 93.7, the ticket. You're listening to coverage of the NCAA tournament live from Buffalo Wings and Rings at 68th and O on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Follow Nick and Enrique on Twitter at Nick underscore Sainert and at Radio Rico AC. More of Happy Hour is next on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Where will your path take you, traveler? To seek fortune in a new career? Or on a journey to distant lands for a well-deserved vacation? Wherever you go, one distraction could spell disaster. You can change your fate, adventurer. Don't drive distracted. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Prashawn Jackson here for Bauer Underground, who has been serving local contractors and utility contractors all across the state since 1997. When you see the black and white trucks, you know the baddest dudes in the business have arrived. Bauer is currently looking for equipment operators, laborers, diesel mechanics, and aerial linemen. Join the brotherhood built on hard work, authentic people, and pedigree of success. Bauer, a family-friendly company who reminds you, go be ready. Forget the lame excuse this year. Your boss already knows why you can't make it to work for those magical two days in mid-March. Join 93.7 The Ticket on Thursday and Friday, March 21st and 22nd at Buffalo Wings and Rings at 68th and O for March Mayhem. Come early on Thursday and get a ping pong ball with a lucky team on it and stay all day for prizes throughout and buzzer beater upsets. It's March Mayhem with 93.7 The Ticket for the NCAA Tournament at Buffalo Wings and Rings, 68th and 0. Hi everyone, Kendall Warnock, A1 Automotive in downtown Lincoln. The last few years have been wild, but we've been here for you through all the ups and downs and we'll be here for you when you need us the most. For all your travels and for your day-to-day -day driving. With winter conditions causing problems all over town, the last thing anyone needs this year is constant car troubles. Let us help you drive in peace, and make sure you drive to work and to winter destinations safe. A1 Automotive, 11th and L Street downtown, always honest answers. 
Sandhills Global is hiring. With their fast-paced, growing culture, they have hundreds of new openings in sales, marketing, traveling support, software development, web design, and more. Full-time roles offer a four-and-a-half-day work week, along with flexible internships in most areas. Career and internship opportunities are available at our global headquarters in Lincoln, Nebraska. Find your fit today at www.sandhills.jobs. Hi folks, Sean Callahan here for Koppel Chevrolet GMC and the Chevrolet and GMC truck month is now underway. We've got huge savings in Louisville. Get 9,000 off or 1.9% for 72 months on select models. Yes, you heard right. That's 9,000 off or 1.9% for 72 months happening right now at Koppel. So take that short money saving drive down 144th Street or check us out online at koppelcars.com. You'll be glad you did. All deals with roof credit stock number G214773. You never think cancer will happen to you. I smoked for over 40 years. My doctor recommended that I get annual lung cancer screening. They were able to catch my cancer at stage one. It's never too late to quit. Even if you're still smoking, you need to ask your doctor about annual lung cancer screening. Just 30 minutes a year could save your life. Call the Nebraska Tobacco Quit Line, 1-800-QUIT-NOW, 1-800-784-8669. Paid for by Tobacco Free Nebraska. Aired with the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and this station. You're listening to coverage of the NCAA Tournament live from Buffalo Wings and Rings at 68th and O on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. You're listening to The Happy Hour with Nick Sainert and Enrique alvarez Clary. This isn't the real Caesars Palace, is it? What do you mean? Did, um, did Caesar live here? Um, no. I didn't think so. On 937 the ticket and the ticketfm.com. Happy hour, new crew. I'm still here, joined by though, Jay Foreman, Jake Bakovin, the two smartest basketball minds at the 937 ticket, without a doubt. That's right. Yeah, I'll take that. Not up for debate <laughs> at all. I'll take I that. I put you right up there, Austin. I think you're underselling yourself. I, a I bit. could be, I could yeah. be top five, but <laughs> I, Strix top probably two. got some knowledge going on. But. He might be number three. <laughs> Best game yeah. of the day so far for you two. Well, I'm interested in the Creighton game, obviously, because of the local flavor. They look just a bit out of sync, uh, which is kind of weird to say for a team that's up at half, but <laughs> they do. I mean, Baylor Shireman's been called for traveling a few times. You know, they're, they're generally a, a well, you know, they, they I think they foul the least in NCAA. I mean, they're, they're a well-coached team. They just kind of look a little out of sync. Maybe they it's the soft. nerves. Maybe it's Akron. They look soft. <laughs> they do a little bit. Soft, Akron right? is cranking up their defensive intensity. I think ultimately Creighton has too much firepower, and they'll get it going. Doug McDermott does a really good job of, Greg. you know, or Greg, excuse me. Um, Doug does too. Yeah, Doug does too. <laughs> uh, get him, give it to him, Dougie. Um, he, he he does a really his staff and him they do a really good job of making adjustments. I think the most impressive game was probably Michigan State against uh, Mississippi State. The, you know, the aura of, of Tom Izzo, uh, tournament ready, why he got the benefit of the doubt. We talked about it on Old School with Austin with me, you, and DP. I strongly still think that Pittsburgh should have got in, definitely over Virginia. Um, but Michigan State was also in my crosshairs as well. Uh, they proved me wrong. So, you know what, I just think – and then also you got right now where you got uh, – BYU and DeQueens, they are going at it. And I like to see it. I like to see teams that well, obviously DeQueens, obviously, or uh, um, Duquesne. Duquesne. I call it DeQueens. I'm, I'm tripping today. Uh, Nebraska beat them. Come on, Austin. Stop being, listen, let's let me just flow. Okay? Uh, you know, Nebraska beat them. Uh, but it's good to see them getting after the uh, BYU Cougars and uh, look like they might be able to pull it out. But, uh, you know, look, it's now BYU came back. You know, just as I said that, but I think there's some competitive games. I think this year we said it yesterday. One, what's your thoughts, Baca? This turn is going to set up to be the most competitive tournament in quite some time because there's not an odd odds-on favorite or favorites. It's all about styles and can you get a easier path to the Sweet 16, Grade Eight, and Final Four, and then obviously the final. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, there's nobody in this uh, in this tournament field that I think is like a lock. You know, feel good to win six games in a row. UConn might be up there yeah. with the favorite. Houston might is up there with one of the favorites. All the while, I think, you know, Nebraska getting a matchup with Houston would be interesting. So, I mean, I think everybody's going to have an interesting path. And, you know, it's usually once you kind of get into the final four and that sort of thing, um, you, you might have 
you know, a couple one seeds, and, and then you have that surprise. Uh, yeah. I, I'm interested. It's always tough to pick out the surprise of the tournament. Sometimes it's easier to pick out the tournament champion, uh, but the surprise is really hard to pick out. So, I mean, we'll see where, where it comes from, but you're right. I mean, I, the, the, even just filling out my own bracket, uh, there's so many challenges. Whoever you pick as a champion, you're going to get nervous along the way uh, because there's no easy path. Speaking of that, let me ask you guys this. Of all the four number one seeds, UConn, North Carolina, Houston, and Purdue, give me – you talk about surprises, Bach. Which of those will be surprisingly lose maybe a game or two early, earlier than you normally you know thought? I mean, obviously Purdue has a history of it. But Houston does as well. They've been impressive all year, right? But they've been impressive for ever since Calvin Sampson has been there. But they've also lost some games early in the tournament, you know, uh, you know, at a steady pace. Which one of these four do you think is going to stub their toe? Boy, Houston, I mean, that's a tough, it's just a tough bracket. I mean, I talked about the second round matchup, whether that's Nebraska or AM, that could be one to watch out for. But I, I'm just through that, that bracket, you've got Wisconsin and Duke and Kentucky and Marquette, and even Florida, Texas, Texas Tech. Tech. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's just, I, I just think that that's a tough bracket to get out of uh, the South region, and, excuse me. Um, <laughs> but like you said, Purdue, Purdue's interesting because I don't, I, you know, I don't see like too many challenges popping up. Obviously, maybe Kansas. Uh, once you meet up in the Sweet 16, but Kansas doesn't though. get there. Kansas doesn't get there. Kansas might not I get there. I keep telling they, people yeah. Kansas does not get there. Well, they're down without one of their stars, and so well, that's Collier, not going to help. Yeah. Collier's out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but other than that, it looks like Purdue's got a path, but it's Purdue. It's hard to believe in Matt Painter in the tournament. Maybe he can shed that. I believe he's been to one Elite Eight. So maybe this could be like that sort of year. It should have been to the Final Four, but lost to Virginia on that miracle, right? Yeah. Dikite up to, to Kyle Guy yeah. at, at the end of that game. I, I'm going to go through all four one seeds here really quick. UConn seems like the least likely to have it happen, but it's been since Florida in 2006-7 since we have a repeat champ. Sure. UConn is gettable. If they run into a team that shoots it well from three, that's their that's the antidote to them. Okay. Right? They, they get a little streaky themselves, and they can get shot out of the gym. Carolina. Lost to Georgia Tech. There's some weird losses on that schedule. And Davis and Baycott are career losers, so enough said on them there. <laughs> um, Houston, not deep. Athletic, no. tough. Their depth is being depleted, and they're not big. If they run right. into a big team that can play defense, Shed and Cryer are really good. Probably right. my favorite guard duo in the country. They've been enough so far. Can they keep doing it for six more games? I don't know. And then Purdue. The history, that's all it is. If you look at each of these teams, Purdue's profile rates out as the safest of any of them. Right. Purdue's big. They shoot it. Their guards are pretty tall as well. They have decent athleticism on the wing. They have different guys that can be the X factor, but you cannot in the NCAA tournament discount history. No, this year's team isn't last year's team or the team before that or the team before that. But Purdue has to prove that they can get over that hump before I give them the benefit of the doubt. So despite all the questions, to me, it has to be Purdue as the right. team most likely to lose sooner than you think just because of their history. Yeah, Carson Edwards isn't coming off the bench to make He's it out. He's not walking through those that doors. That was that magical run they had. Uh, and it's interesting because they do I, – I think it's not just their path, but it's their their resume. I mean, their resume speaks very loudly. They, they had a lot of impressive wins this year. Um, and so I think they've probably got the best resume. You know, UConn, you could argue – but it, it's just that feeling of, man, and, and it's Big Ten altogether. Yeah. That's why I was glad to see Michigan State get the win. Um, and when you ask about North Carolina, that I mean, that's going to be a great game, Michigan State and Carolina, if Carolina obviously gets by their 16th seed. Um, so, but, I, I mean, it, it's just the Big Ten needs a strong year. Wisconsin, at least, has been playing well as of late. Uh, yeah, they're Mike, getting, yeah, they're getting hot yeah, right now. Yeah, they got right, hot at the right time. Of course, the last couple of weeks haven't been that case, but – they got out at the right time in Illinois. I, I heard Rico say it, and it's myself too. It's the same thing. Like I think the Terrence Shannon Jr. Just the depth they have on that team. Um, that's a dangerous team that I would like to see make a big run. But it's Brad Underwood in the tournament, yeah. so I'm I, I Trick just off I can't can't just it, I don't have too much confidence picking them far. Yeah, you got to tell Brad Underwood this is this isn't Stephen F. Austin. That's right. right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I also want the the most interesting games always to, the ones that are most ups, upset prone. That's five against twelve, right? So we got mm -hmm. Gonzaga. I think I picked McNeese State. Yeah. I think I think that I think I think they got too much speed for them, right? And then you got Wisconsin against James Madison. I think that's going to be a tough game for Wisconsin. I think the guard play, 
uh, with led by Chucky Hebron, Nebraska's own. I think that will lead them to get to you know a matchup against Duke. But that is going to this is going to be a tough game. That I mean, be, the yeah. two games I just mentioned are tough. Now we go to the other side, right? You think of five against twelve, St. Mary's against Grand Canyon. St. Mary's is a team that's always on at like midnight, and they always give yeah. Gonzaga a run for their money. Beat them twice this year. Yeah, and and this is probably their best team as far as when they matched up against Gonzaga. I don't think Gonzaga is as tough as they usually are. I think St. Mary's gets through pretty easily. Ooh, I don't. I do. I, don't. I do, this and I'm willing to put money on that one, that too. That was hardest for me to pick. Grand really? Canyon tie on Grant Foster is legit. Yeah. St. Mary's struggled early in the year, which raised, raised some questions. I've been on the train of St. Mary's being due to have a run like San Diego State did last year. Right. No. But they haven't necessarily blown those questions out of my mind. I love the Lopes. They're going to be a tournament contender for years to come out of the whack. They play a fun style. Bryce Drews, the coach down yeah. there. This was a tough matchup because I have been kind of like one of those hipsters on both of these teams all year. I, I picked both I picked both teams in different yeah. brackets because I, I cannot pick a favorite child in that matchup. I like it. Then the other one is San Diego State against UAB. I think San Diego State is quietly going to move on through there. I think that they just have a really good program, really good coach. They re-upped him. Um, UAB and, last year would have been fun in this tournament. They right. had a guy by the name of Jelly Walker, which is just a fantastic sorry, name. That's a great name. <laughs> um, I forget his actual first name, but it, it doesn't matter. I mean, you go by yeah. Jelly. Andy Kennedy had an all-time tirade against Memphis as UAB blew that lead. Um, yeah, last year UAB went 29-10, and 14-6 and six in Conference USA. So, yeah, Jordan Jelly Walker averaged 22. They had three guys at 10 points or more. The only guy that didn't average double digits, Trey Jameson, got an NBA look. He's their senior. They were really fun last year, but San Diego State just feels like a machine right yeah. now. Another game that I, I watched the play-in game last night, Colorado you know, beat Boise State. They have a, a, a future lottery pick, and they got some other guys on the team that you know they're really good on the defensive end, uh, timely shots. They, they got Bang got Dak from uh, Lincoln Southeast coming off the bench, shot blocker, kind of rim-the-rim guy. They're going to be locking up against Florida, and Florida's big man is out for this tournament. Uh, Florida has two excellent guards, but Colorado has three or four guards forwards that they can switch everything and really stymie that offense. Do you think of the playing the teams that got you know won in the playing game? Do you think Colorado is set up to beat or upset a number seven Florida, considering where Florida how Florida finished in the tournament in their own uh, conference tournament, but then also having their big inside force? Uh, which led them to have an inside-outside game. He's out for the whole tournament. Would it be weird if I took both teams from Colorado that won in the play-in mm. in the next round? No. It'd be a little because, weird. <laughs> because they, Colorado State was impressive. Yeah. It wasn't just the way that they stymied Virginia offensively, who's always kind of not really being interested in scoring the basketball at a high rate. It's what they were able to do against the Virginia's defense and getting downhill, essentially getting paint touches and then attacking the rim and just look to step faster – Right. And looked like they were more tournament. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Austin. They looked like more tournament ready. Oh, like by they, far. Like they by were really far. they were really playing for, you know. Well, they had the best player on the court. Right. Like Ryan Dunn for Virginia was OK, but Isaiah Stevens was legit. Yeah. Nick Clifford stepped up and Colorado has two guys that are going to be yeah. regular Colorado, not state. And right. uh, Jalen Williams of the Thunder. Yeah. His younger brother, Cody's on that team. And yeah. Tristan De Silva has been yeah. around for a long time. You might remember Eddie Lampkin from TCU. Oh yeah, last year he's at Colorado. He, yeah, he, had the put back bucket. Yeah, he's their inside force, yeah. and, and he plays below the rim. Uh, but he is an excellent finisher. He was struggling a little bit with the you know holding on to the ball because Boise State themselves play good defense. Uh, but he gives them that physical presence that allows all the other players, Williams included, um, to go out there and get busy. And then they it allows him also. He's not a really a rim protector, Austin. He's a physical presence, mm -hmm. and he's when he fouls you, he fouls you on with a purpose. But then also, he's able to, you know, kind of get in the way enough to to affect the way you shoot. So the chaos part of that have bottom half of the South bracket would be if we get Eddie Lampkin and DJ Burns of North Carolina State. Oh yeah, in a Sweet oh, Sixteen game. Dude, that's two offensive tackles <laughs> going at each other. Yeah. Two <laughs> offensive. I mean, just imagine. You can't call a body foul on either one of those yeah. dudes. And so uh, – They're just big. Yeah. And, you know, Lamp – I mean, uh, you know, with Lampkin, I think he has a little bit more game than, you know, because then what his body, you know – Would tell you. Would tell yeah. you. But he also does a lot of the little things that are, that are that are so 
you know, important to Colorado on their offense that he, I wouldn't say he's their most valuable player, but he's one of their most valuable players because what he does as far as the little things, it allows them, Austin and, and Bach, to be more efficient on offense and defense. And so that's where you really appreciate a player like that. And sometimes when you get in a tournament and you get a win, say Colorado gets a win, then you start to see the stories about him. And then obviously, you know, that's where it kind of stars are born. There's a team per year that gets at least one more win after being in the first yeah. four. And, I yeah. could see it being two this year. Yeah. Yeah. It could be Colorado State or Colorado. A little bragging rights there because both the teams are playing at a good rate, but then also have the personnel. And I like both of their coaches too. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, I love Colorado's coach. Kind of, you know, for, yeah, for, for them. You know, Colorado. If I'm ta- if I'm him, I'm talking to my team, man. We got a chip on our shoulder. We should have been in the tournament. We, there's no way we should have been in the play-in. When you look at the way that they've played and the way they finished the season, um, they should have been a foregone conclusion to get in there. So I think that's also what led them uh, to be able to push through against uh, Boise State as well, because I think they had that little bit of a mental edge that were willing to go farther and harder. And you saw it in some of those fouls that Lampkin was dishing out uh, so nicely. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think I picked Colorado State, too. I mean, obviously, they got the win early in the year against Creighton um, and, and going up against Texas there. I, I, I would say as, of the play-in winners, I, I think that's probably the, the team that I would choose. But um, it, it's kind of interesting. I wonder how much of an advantage there is to the first four. Obviously, you're playing in Dayton. It's different. Um, you know, so sometimes you kind of think of different tournaments, and, and maybe you, you can kind of get the nerves out. And, and But I – I don't know. I mean, it, it obviously has happened in the past to where these teams can, you know, one of these teams comes out and makes a run. Uh, but I don't know how much advantage there is to playing that, that game to, to kind of shake off those nerves. Cause I think you're still, you're in a different atmosphere by the time you leave Dayton. I just saw this come across on Twitter and because Long Beach state and Arizona are playing right now, it's Arizona by one minute and a half or so to go in the first half. Long Beach state's AD had this comment to say about firing Dan Monson. My belief and hope is that by doing what I did and the timing of it, they would play inspired, and that's what they did. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but it worked. Yeah. <laughs> the AD not, said that. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I'm trying but to pat myself. Yeah, here yeah, I go. Yeah. And you did not fire him to inspire the team. You fired him because he actually had been pretty consistent. He took over a program that needs a lot more work than uh, they would have been really uh, originally willing to invest in, and the players started to get going. But when you hear Dan Monson talk about it, he had some injuries and he had to, he needed the team to gel. And sometimes when you come down from your office and just look at this the, the the product, you're not understanding all the nuances that go into coaching a basketball uh, team, especially at a place like Long Beach State. You're not at UCLA, you're not at USC, you don't have a ton of resources, and you have a coach that believes in what you're doing there. And sometimes just fan bases, decision makers can can minimize what you've done on a consistent basis for so long he's been there since 2007 right and he is long beach state basketball especially in present day and he's had successful teams but then it's like oh well yeah they get made a tournament run all right yeah that's what it expected to do but then you don't appreciate it till it's gone and if i was at ad instead of patting himself on the back you need to be patting dan munson on the shoulder and saying can we talk again and if you're dan munson you say nope yeah thanks especially especially well you only say nope if you got other offers, but it definitely I'm, – I'm sure that bridge is burned. And, you know, it was real, also I liked where – obviously the coaching fraternity is a very tight fraternity, right? Um, I like that Mark Few, you know, went to bat for him. I know they have obviously, you know, you know, coaching experience and a lot of respect for each other. But ultimately, you know, look, you, you know what it takes to get there. You know who's respected in the coaching business. And it was just sad that they uh, fired him so quickly after 17 years. At a Long Beach State, with him and being that tenure, you let him walk out the door when he's ready to go. Um, but ultimately, good fortune came to a good coach and a good team. Let's go ahead and take a break right here. It is the second hour of the happy hour. Happy hours, I guess. Jay Foreman, Jake Bakov, and Austin Norman Jake. wrapping up the 1 o'clock hour next. You're listening to coverage of the NCAA tournament live from Buffalo Wings and Rings at 68th and 0 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Download our app by searching 93.7 The Ticket in your app store to stay in touch and listen all day long wherever you are. More of the happy hour is next on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. 
You don't think about your roof very often, but you should never take it for granted. Roofing Service Company takes every measure to provide you with the highest quality roofing solution. Whether it's a new roof installation, roof repair, or a re-roofing project, their overall goal is to provide you with a pleasant experience and a long-lasting roof. If you have a need for siding or gutters, they're your place too. Visit RoofingServiceCompany.com for more info today. Ninety-three seven, the ticket. Fox KFXL weather. Brought to you by Bryant Air Conditioning, Heating, Electrical, and Plumbing. Your Lincoln forecast for today: a few flurries possible this morning. Otherwise, mainly cloudy and breezy today, with an afternoon high around fifty-six. Tonight, a chance of showers. Otherwise, mainly cloudy, with a low around thirty-nine. And tomorrow, decreasing clouds will be breezy too, with a high around fifty-two. I'm meteorologist Kyle Clark, ninety-three point seven, the ticket, and the ticket FM are you in the market for a new garage door or need to repair your old one? It's winter time, and that means snow, wind, and freezing temperatures, all things that can cause sticky locks and damage to your garage door. If you're experiencing any issues with your commercial or residential garage door during the winter months, call Cameron Hall and his team at Doors Plus. Don't be trapped outside in the cold because of a poorly maintained garage door. Call Doors Plus today at 402-590-5800 or visit them online at doorsplusllc.com. Doors Plus, garage doors and more. Rosie Sports Bar and Grill. Open for lunch and dinner at 1501 Center Park Road. Prashawn Jackson here for Bauer Underground, who has been serving local contractors and utility contractors all across the state since 1997. When you see the black and white trucks, you know the baddest dudes in the business have arrived. Bauer is currently looking for equipment operators, laborers, diesel mechanics, and aerial linemen. Join the brotherhood built on hard work, authentic people and pedigree of success. Bauer, a family-friendly company who reminds you, go be red! Spring is here. It's time to get back outside and into proper shoes this year. Brown Shoe Fit is the place to buy this spring with their sale on athletic shoes. Get $15 off any regular price athletic shoes with respected brands like Hoka, Brooks, New Balance, and On Running. And don't forget, Browns carries a large arrangement of sizes and widths to fit your feet properly. Start your spring off right at Brown Shoe Fit, just south of 66 and Q in Lincoln. Nutrition Authority invites you to try Anarchy, which is an exciting free workout for athletes and fitness enthusiasts who want the most out of the workout. Anarchy can only be found at Nutrition Authority. Remember, when you want results, the solution is simple. Nutrition Authority. Stop in, call, or check us out at MyNutritionAuthority.com. Iron High Construction is higher. They're looking for hardworking, self-motivated individuals who are team players. Iron Height Construction has openings for an experienced project manager, estimator, apprentice, skilled laborer, and erector or installer. They will train the right people and make sure you understand the position and requirements. At Iron Height Construction, it's own it, be honest, and do it right. Apply today and learn more about their other benefits at ironheightconstruction.com, where they're committed to you every step of the way. Start your Sundays off right with Jeff and Nicole Essink on Fitness Fanatics. Jeff and Nicole discuss health and wellness, how to achieve fitness goals, and more through the life of gym owners and gym goers. It's Fitness Fanatics from 9 to 11 a.m. on Sundays on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. You're counting on your team to win, so why not prove it? At Warhorse Sportsbook, their win is your win. Put your money where your mouth is on nearly every sporting event. Use the Warhorse app to check odds and build your bets before placing your wagers in person at Warhorse Casino in Lincoln or Horseman's Park in Omaha, including live in-game betting. No bets, no glory. Wagers may only be placed on Nebraska-based teams when played outside the state of Nebraska. Must be 21 or older to gamble. Gambling problem? Call 1-833-BET-OVER. You're listening to coverage of the NCAA tournament live from Buffalo Wings and Rings at 68th and 0 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. You're listening to The Happy Hour with Nick Sainert and Enrique alvarez Clary. When I gave you the cookie, I heard very clearly, I don't think about you, Schmidt. Why would I think about you? Because we're friends. We're not animals. We're men. The only time a man is allowed to think about another man is when that man is Jay Cutler. On 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Where did Jay Cutler go to college? Where did Jay Cutler go to college? I feel like I should know this. It was an SEC school. It was an SEC school. Uh, it does not fit his reputation. Yeah, uh, it doesn't fit his reputation. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't one of the big ones. I'm leaning. Where am I leaning? 
There it is. There we go. Vanderbilt. <laughs> you went to Vandy. There That's we go. Right. I miss he Vanderbilt. Went Vanderbilt? He went to Vandy. Went to Vanderbilt. Yeah. yeah. I miss Vanderbilt being good at basketball. Like, I don't know why, but there was a run there where Vandy was just in the NCAA tournament year after year under Kevin Stallings. And they've been so bad. I mean, they made it in Bryce Drew's first year. They were 19 and 16, got a nine seed. But I just remember like 2007 Big East Pit. Mm -hmm. Big East UConn, oh, yeah. but then like Vanderbilt was just a good <laughs> basketball team. That's a weird. Nobody walks into Nashville. That's and a just weird wins thing. The game. That's weird. But is, I, don't, I miss I mean, Vanderbilt being I don't good remember, basketball. I don't, I don't remember this. You're the only one outside of Tennessee that's ever said that. Yeah, I think, I think you are. But yeah, I mean the Jerry Stackhouse thing didn't work out, so we'll see where they go next. Well, it's weird Austin's the they... only person I've ever heard say, "Man, I miss Vanderbilt basketball." <laughs> basketball, I, I do. Not the same I miss Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt basketball. <laughs> Kevin Stallings ruined his reputation by leaving for Pitt. That, that just did not need to happen. So at Vanderbilt, he was there from 1999 to 2016, made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven NCAA terms. So not like a lot. Like Vandy was never like great, not like a power. Yeah. But they would get it, you know, a four or five seed, being an interesting game. Went to Pitt and went 16 and 17, 8 and 24, and has not coached since. Mm. That's like saying you miss Vanderbilt basketball is like, man, I miss I miss Northwestern football. Like, I just missed that run that they had. It was like three hey, years. Hey, Pat Fitzgerald fans out there. We also, there we, we, we also don't <laughs> I say that. We also don't recognize that Stanford was, like, good at basketball for a while. Oh, yeah. Oh, we do. Casey Jacobson. There was a there was a minute where Stanford was, like, a football power and a basketball power. And it was Lopez like, twins went out there. Yeah. Think, so. So, Smart people that are good at sports. Those are always fun. 94 <laughs> to 2004. Stanford made the NCAA tournament every year. 94, 95 to 2003, 2004. They made it 2004, 2005. Uh, Trent Johnson was the coach for three years. Johnny Dawkins oh. took him to a sweet 16. That was really the high water mark for him. And then Jared Haas has just been basically the, the pinnacle of average. He's just been there. Yes. Been a filler. They had a lottery pick. I don't remember what his name was. He went to Memphis. Well, I don't think the ACC is going to help out much. <laughs> I mean, that, that That's still a stuff. weird combination. Was it Stanford, Cal, and SMU? Yeah, yeah. Cal had a run, too. Hey, Cal, look, we were talking about teams that were football or basketball schools. For a minute, Cal was, Cal was a pretty oh, uh, fun football school. You're talking about Zaire Williams? Yes. Who went to the Pelicans. Oh, okay. Who drafted by the Pelicans, given to Memphis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tyrell I wanted, Terry. I wanted Zaire Williams on the Knicks because I thought Paula. he was a baller. Dwight Powell, anyone? Ooh, Dwight Powell, Dwight Powell went to Stanford? What? Dwight Powell went to Stanford. Uh, Landry Fields. That fits. Uh, the, Lo the Lopez twins. Yep. Bach mentioned Casey Jacobson. I cannot see Robin Lopez playing it for Stanford. Like, Brooke Lopez, yeah, sure. But Robin, nah, that's a that's a wild man. Oh, Mark Mad Dog Mark Madsen. Madsen. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Johnny Rogers. Not that one. Not that the other he one. went to two colleges. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm, I'm scrolling back through the list here of other notable NBA players from Stanford. Russ Lawler, does that stand out to anyone? Oh, yeah, totally. Um, okay, now we have to do this for Vanderbilt because I feel like Vandy hasn't had a lot of NBA I don't, success. Like, this guy's sitting tough. here talking about Vanderbilt. I do not remember Vanderbilt basketball like, Vanderbilt at all. Vanderbilt was good. Vanderbilt you, was Bach, good. You? You're like the, the other big college basketball uh, guy. I don't necessarily remember a, a run. I, mean, I remember having seen them in the tournament, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily have fond memories of Vanderbilt basketball. Yeah, I'm not sitting here like, man, Vanderbilt basketball. Bring back just, Vandy basketball. Some good Make Vandy yes. basketball great again. That's my campaign You're, plan you're a it. weird guy. Um, you know that? How about Festus Azalee? There you go. That's Festus with thing. the Vandy? Vandy. Okay. Uh, Damari Carroll? He did not go to He Vandy. went to Vandy. Dang. He went to Vandy. None of these people like should have gone. To, like none of these guys should have gone to Vandy. Right? Yeah. That's what happened? Yeah. Yeah, that's what that's what. Oh, snap. BYU just hit a three to cut it to two. Yep. To cut it to a two point lead Coops, for Duquesne. Coops. Six point seven. That was that was beautiful. It was like off a rebound. He runs, you know, it's like a fast break. He just stops. He's like five feet behind the three point line. It just <laughs> hucks it up. Nothing but net. Gorgeous. Call the timeout right away. You're gonna foul once they inbound. I mean yeah. you're gonna go for the seal, obviously, but you're gonna foul right away. We'll see what happens. Duquesne, make your free throws. Okay, here here's a trivia Ooh, question for you guys. Can't look, he's covering it up. Just for fun. Cover it up, cover it up. Who gosh. Who was the most recent draft pick from Creighton? Creighton's I was about most recent I was, NBA draft. I pick. was this close to saying Ty Ty Washington, but he went to Kentucky. He decommitted uh, and went to Kentucky. Correct. Doug was drafted, but that was a while ago. Patton. He, he is the Patton. Doug is the fourth most recent. Patton is the third most recent. Okay. There have been oh. two since that. Two since that. Two Jeez. since that. Twenty eighteen and twenty twenty one. 
2021. I feel like we should know this. We should know this. Okay, 2018 was Kyrie Thomas. Okay, okay. yeah, fair okay. enough, fair enough. 2021, Marcus Zagorowski. Oh, Zagorowski he was, got drafted? Second he was round, good. 49th overall. That was a good player. How What's he that? doing? Um, let's look him up. <laughs> Zagorowski do? What's that guy doing? Huh? Wasn't he like cousins with Funny someone? He was like Mark, Michael Carter Williams' cousin, yeah, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah. Funny because Dougie's the only one that's okay. actually doing anything in the NBA. He's playing in the Israeli Basketball Premier League. There you go. Yeah. Not playing he's in the NBA. Team. Yeah. Kyrie Thomas, I don't think he's playing in the NBA either. Justin Patton had a had a had like a three game run with I think it was the Houston Rockets, where it was like, okay, this seven footer can ball, and then like the season ended and he never got resigned. He got traded more than he got minutes. Yeah, <laughs> this was an OKC, Houston, Dallas, like he was everywhere. Yeah. Kyrie Thomas is playing in Turkey right now. Okay, okay. How about that? Petkum Spor. Yeah, I know whatever that. that means. I know that. So yeah, if you don't, if you didn't learn anything from this segment, Marcus Zagorowski is Creighton's most recent draft pick and bring back Vandy basketball. There you go. <laughs> That's right. That's why you listen. That's to all you need. Ticket. Again, we are out here, at Buffalo Wings and Rings. We are about to do another raffle drawing since we're at the top of the hour. We'll go to break. We'll give prizes away here. Stay tuned throughout the day. We'll keep covering the men's basketball NCAA tournament. Uh, Duquesne at the free throw line, looking to ice out BYU. Creighton up two touchdowns on Akron. Rico, Bach, Austin. We're going to break. See you in a minute. You're listening to coverage of the NCAA Tournament live from Buffalo Wings and Rings at 68th and 0 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. This is Monster Jam. Witness Big Air. Two-wheel skills, backflips, and all-out racing. Monster Jam, as big as it gets. Brought to you by the original Super Glue. Stop by your local participating Westlake Ace Hardware locations for your $10 savings coupon. Restrictions may apply. See store for details. Coming to Pinnacle Bank Arena March 29th and 30th. Hello, this is Mary Pat Waite. I've had the privilege of working with Lincoln Families as their realtor for more than 31 years. And I'm so 